All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Get the regular meeting of the Mason City City Council June 21st, 2011. Um, just a note real quick, uh, packets can be found at masoncity.net, uh, down the right-hand side of your government, mayor council, and then the packets are right there uh, with the uh, agenda. Um, call the meeting to order, let the record reflect that all, all council members are present. Is there a motion and a second to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. All right. Well, tonight we've got a, a very nice item to start off with. Uh, we have, uh, come on up here, guys. We have with us the uh, Coach Kurt Bonzer and the uh, New State Golf Champions in our right. chambers tonight. <laughs> These, these, uh, these young men here uh, battled out of Lake Panorama to win the state title by 12 shots, I believe, and shot a total of uh, 676. Uh, they're led by uh, Dalton Olson and Jacob uh, Erdahl, and they've got uh, Derek Erdahl, Chris Hall, and Tanner Griffin with them. And I believe Tyler Fisher is not here tonight, but just was not able to come. So, um, we put together a certificate for all of you uh, to have, and I'll read it here. The City of Mason City, Iowa honors the Newman, Newman Boys Golf Team for their success in achieving the title of Class 1A Golf State Champions. The, certified, the certificate is awarded to the Newman Boys Golf Team, signed by the band. Please come on up here and get up, and, and uh, you might want to start down there and shake everyone's hand as they go. Thank you. Congratulations. Give these young men one more round of applause. <laughs> All right, item number two is the proclamation of National Home Ownership Month. And I'll read the proclamation as follows. We'll have Kathy Gaines up and never sees this. Whereas the home ownership has been a goal of American citizens since the early days of our republic, and whereas owning a home of their own has symbolized the American dream for millions of our working families, and whereas home ownership helped promote personal and civic responsibility, security, thrift, self-reliance, pride which helps build our sense of community, and whereas expanding home ownership strengthens our nation's families, as well as our cities and towns, strengthens the Mason City economy, expands the great American middle class and prepares our nation to embrace the rich possibilities of the 21st century. And whereas our local branch of the Consumers Credit Counseling Service of Northeastern Iowa conducts various programs dedicated to assisting people pursue their dreams of home ownership, now therefore I, Eric Bookmeyer, the Mayor of Mason City, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2011 as National Home Ownership Month. I encourage our residents to engage in programs and activities that ultimately lead to home ownership, making a better future a reality for all our citizens. This game. Alright. Item number three, we have a quarterly update uh, by Visit Mason City, and I believe their director, uh, Ms. Suwon. that we've been working on. Um, as you noted, I am Sue Armour, I'm the director for Visit Mason City. It was formerly known as the Mason City Convention and Visitors Bureau, or CBB. And we market Mason City as a tourism destination, working with meetings and conventions, sporting events, and also motor coach tours and leisure travelers. Wanted to give you a brief update on some of the projects that we've been working on since we last provided our update. In addition to the weekly sales calls that we make, 
Um, Visit Mason City has been working on several progressive programs um, aimed at attracting visitors to the area. One such program is our Tourism Marketing Grant. This year, a total of $8,000 was awarded to recipients, and based upon conversations with these folks, it is estimated that these funds will aid in attracting over 25,000 visitors to the community. In addition, the program attracted over $10,000 of private funds used to market the community. Mason City has also been selected as one of the five communities featured on the Iowa Tourism Office's I Dig Iowa promotion. And this campaign is um, a social media campaign providing free publicity to those communities that were selected. So we are able to take advantage of that. Another program we've been working on for visitors who prefer to use smartphones to access travel information, we are pleased to offer a mobile friendly website. The site allows users to search for upcoming events, things to do, places to stay, shopping, dining, options all from their smartphone. So when a mobile user goes to our traditional website, the site automatically transfers the smartphone user to the mobile site, which then makes it easy and um, user friendly for them. We have also recently stepped up efforts in the long running Hometown Hero campaign by establishing a web presence dedicated to the program encouraging local residents to help attract tourism business to the area. So we ask residents to share contact information regarding meetings and events that they attend so we can contact the key decision makers of these meetings and events and invite them to consider North Iowa as a future host site. Another program that we've been working on is the Media Blitz. Um, to better tell our story, Visit Mason City and Right on the Park partnered to create a video, photo gallery, and additional information about the area. And we sent out a large campaign to media conducted in early June with the video and information sent to over 4,000 travel broadcast media and TV and radio and industry publications and travel writers. Again, the goal of this initiative is to attract media attention, especially with all of the buzz going on with all of the new projects coming to completion resulted in free publicity to the area that we could not otherwise afford. Working with tourism partners is also one of our um, main goals, and we have a program called the Hot Deals Program, which taps into the trends of visitors seeking values and discounts. So any business, attractions, dining, events, recreation, lodging, and sh shopping businesses are encouraged to feature a special hot deal offer and take advantage of the opportunity for this deal to be um, displayed on the website and be seen by the over 14,000 customers that use the website each month. And this is a free program. All they need to do is connect with their office and they can manage it themselves. They get a password and they're able to post their own offerings, put expiration dates, and it's just really a very turnkey type of opportunity. In February of this year, the City Council approved an organizational change for Ms. Visit Mason City. And so I wanted to give you an update on where we're at with that. We have received our tax ID number and information has been filed with the Iowa Secretary of State. We're working with our attorney and we have approved articles of incorporation and also bylaws. We are in the process of obtaining a 501c6 status. And soon after we get that um, incorporated, we'll be able to work with you regarding a new 20E agreement with the City of Mason City and Visit Mason City. We have also been busy reviewing potential locations to house the Mason City Visitor Information Center and offices. The board has tried to put great emphasis on being placed at a location that's affordable, but also high, offers high visibility for increased traffic to the Visitor Information Center. This center is a crucial tool in extending visitor stays and increasing return visits, resulting in what we hope is increased visitor spending left behind in the community. So that kind of wraps up some of the things that we've been working on. Um, we continue to visit with the city finance director quarterly to go over financial information so that way he is in the know of where we're at, the funding we have available, and also to seek advice um, as we are entering some unknown territory with the um, with new incorporated organization. So he's been very helpful in giving us good, good guidance. And plus we send, of course, the monthly minutes to each meeting and our newsletters and stuff like that to help keep 
um, constant communication between all of us. And last but not least, um, Mrs. Solberg serves on our board as the city appointment. So at any time, please feel free to visit with her or myself if you have any questions about Visit Mason City. Right, thank you very much, Director. Uh, we'll do one round of questions here. Hold on for just a second. Does anybody have anything for this offer? Thank you very much. Thanks again. It takes the community to do this, and so thank you for being one of our partners. Thank you. All right. Number four is North Iowa Corridor Economic Development Update, and we have a new corridor director, uh, Mesa City EDC, Clear Lake EDC, uh, Mr. Brent Willett here. Welcome to the chamber. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, Council, for having me. Um, I've met all of you and I've had the privilege to do so, but I'm Brent Willett. I'm your relatively new uh, North Iowa Corridor EDC uh, director. Uh, the corridor is the Regional Economic Development Corporation uh, for the cities of Clear Lake, Mason City, and Cerro Gordo County. Uh, first, I want to thank this council for its support uh, on June 7th of the resolution brought forward by Councilman Nelson uh, to commit to the city of Mason City's funding of the corridor uh, for three years moving forward at present levels. The action will permit, uh, this action uh, will permit the quarter to proceed with the development of multi-year action and strategic plans, uh, will permit us to develop multi-year targeted marketing campaigns focused on specific industry targets for which we feel our region provides as a particularly cost competitive option uh, in tandem uh, with a partner three-year commitment in hand uh, from the Clear Lake Economic Development Corporation uh, this action, again, will permit us to pursue multi-year commitments from our private investor base and allow us to focus more on mission and less on fundraising. Uh, this is just my second formal interface with this body uh, since the beginning of the corridor approximately three months ago. I've had the opportunity to meet with each of you, uh, and I appreciate that opportunity. I feel privileged to lead an organization with, which advocates uh, and works toward economic development in a regional sense uh, in a region with, with as much competitive opportunity, I feel, uh, as North Iowa and Mason City has. Mason City, in particular, uh, provides several unique and potentially competitive ca characteristics which we have already been at work uh, in marketing, including a skilled available workforce. Indeed, between 3 and 8 percent of our employed uh, labor shed workforce in our region, that includes Mason City, of course, uh, is listed as what's uh, considered underemployed. Those are uh, mobile professionals. Uh, and, and workers who uh, are currently employed, uh, skilled, but would consider a transition to another career or job opportunity if, the, uh, if that was provided. Uh, that is a very uh, strong number for us in the market as it relates to the availability of skilled labor. Uh, we have infrastructure certainly to some sites, although some other considerations are challenges relative to those sites. Some buildings, inventory is relatively thin in Mason City as it relates to available, particularly industrial buildings. How that's a bit of a, uh, a double-edged sword. Uh, we certainly, as a community, do not want to have a high level uh, of available industrial or commercial inventory on the market. However, you do like to have a certain amount so that we're able to market. We're a bit on the thin side, uh, and we can certainly deal with that, and we, we have some that we're working with right now. Uh, we pair some of those strengths with different, but we feel very complementary competitive qualities in Clear Lake and Saratoga County. Um, provides the corridor, again, with the resources and tools necessary to compete in an incredibly competitive marketplace. Uh, most of you have heard me use the number that between 150 and 200 uh, projects of 150 employees or more uh, take place uh, and are closed in the continental U.S. each year. There's about 10,000 economic development corporations like the corridor competing for those. Uh, projects so the competition the competitive landscape is extremely uh, fierce and uh, we feel uh, very well positioned through the support of the city of Mason City, City of Clear Lake, Cerro County and uh, close to 200 uh, private investors uh, to compete for some of those projects. I've been on, I counted, I've been on the job for 99 days today uh, so tomorrow will be day 100 and I've had the privilege of diving right into project work which is something that uh, any economic developer prefers to do as he begins uh, a new career, uh, a, a new position. Um, of course, I can't comment on most existing projects, uh, but one early result we hope speaks to our focus upon the creation of primary sector jobs and capital investment in North Iowa uh, with this body, City of Mason City's robust assistance 
Uh, and I, I must compliment uh, Brent Trout and his staff for their assistance in this project. We're able to assemble a package of local, regional, and state incentives to attract the cargo kitchen solutions expansion uh, to the Mason City facility. Uh, of course, that will represent $12.5 million in cap new capital investment and 20 new jobs. Um, with respect to the business attraction component of our uh, job, during the last three months, we've seen very strong stage three activity. We consider stage three activity to be site or community specific visits of a company. Stage one would be uh, interaction or interface with a prospect. Uh, stage two would be a proposal from them to us, or excuse me, from us to them. And stage three would be a site or community visit. Um, we feel we've been successful in attracting some potential clients to North Iowa just in the last three months uh, to visit specific sites and buildings. Uh, for the potential location of their job creating project uh, and in tandem with some of those opportunities we have uh, uh, reviewed and overhauled uh, our uh, uh, site reception and uh, uh, community uh, 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 on-site visit process uh, and have been able to put those new processes to work. We have overhauled that system specific to site visits. We're now assembling all essential partners, city, county, EDC, uh, staff, landowners, utilities, other critical partners. We're not hiding each other. We're not hiding uh, uh, um, uh, 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 critical partners from each other and, and cycling them in throughout meetings. We're putting them all in the in the room, and we've had tremendous, tremendous support uh, from the city of Mason City, Clear Lake, Saratoga County, a number of other utility partners in, in assembling some of these uh, visit experiences. We've experienced high marks from each client. We've posted in the last 100 days, and we feel very fortunate to say we remain engaged in each of those projects that we have hosted sites in the last three months. Uh, with retention, with respect to the business expansion retention leg of the school, we are underway in our corridor business retention expansion program, which is a targeted program to survey and visit uh, 75 of North Iowa's largest employers. Uh, the reports of the community bearing the results of an, uh, an online survey uh, is due to you and the rest of the community on Friday. That will include aggregate information on a number of issues surrounding local business and will then be conducting on-site visits um, uh, subsequent to that. As it relates to marketing, uh, we, have, we will continue to work and to improve our website. We have budgeted for wider improvements to uh, NorthIowaCorridor.com in 2012. Uh, my commitment to you is we will continue to improve the site. It is incredibly important. About 94% uh, of prospects who interface with our community research us online before they pick up the phone. Uh, and we've got work to do on our site. Um, the, we, we uh, uh, last month attended the Bio Industrial Biotechnology and Bioprocessing Industry Show in Toronto on behalf of the North Central Iowa Alliance, of which the quarter order is a member. Uh, we were a part of the state of Iowa mission. Uh, six direct projects for the state of Iowa resulted of that, uh, resulted from that trade show, at least one for North Iowa, a project we're currently working at the present time. Uh, we're certainly working towards stronger visibility with an eye toward lead development with a number of statewide and federal partners, including the Department of Economic Development, Alliant Energy, our rail partners, uh, e uh, Economic Development Administration, and the USDA. Uh, next week, I'll be taking a trip to the Twin Cities to meet with the targeted site selector, uh, uh, group of site selectors in the Minneapolis area is a part of a targeted site selector network that we're working to assemble, including Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Louis, Kansas City, and Omaha. Uh, and finally, I would like to invite each of you uh, to the quarter 2011 annual meeting that happens Friday, July 15th at noon at the Music Man Square. Debbie Durham, the director of the Iowa Department of Economic Development, will be our keynote speaker. We feel, feel very fortunate to have uh, the uh, the state's highest ranking economic development official here at our annual meeting. I encourage each of you to attend. The 399 rule does not permit me to get you much of a meal for 399. Tickets are $20, but that's what they are for everybody, and I hope you can make it. Um, and uh, we'd like to see you there. So thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to interfacing with you early and often in these reports and as we work projects together. Thank you, Mr. Willett. All right. You have to do a round of questions here. Yeah. Anything for the director? Well, I, I guess I got a question. Mr. We just, I think I heard you say there's 10,000 of these organizations in the United States. Roughly, yes. So regionalization isn't that popular then, huh? Well, it's increasingly popular. Because that would be like 200 per, or how many would that be per state? Yeah, probably roughly 200. 200. Um, so I, I mean, think about it. I mean, so regionalization is not. I think. I, I certainly. I, I think that I, I, I think our our industry is relatively young. 
uh, is about 30, 30 years old as it relates to professional <coughs> dedicated economic development work. It's been going on for a long, long time. Um, and so I think that the industry, specific, not to get at too much of a macro level here, but is uh, reaching a point of uh, transition, uh, much like any business meets a maturity uh, point. And I think you're seeing a, uh, a, a, a very increased level of regional collaboration, formal regional collaboration. As an example, the state of Iowa, uh, the Department of Economic Development, which I referenced earlier, uh, is, uh, is distributing its leads that it develops throughout the, the country and the world to regional groups. I mentioned the North Central Iowa Alliance, which is a regional marketing uh, group that we partner with other agencies on uh, regional marketing uh, effort. They're distributing those leads that way. They're moving uh, 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 organizations, with, whether we like it or not, into a regional environment. Okay. This 10,000 seem like quite a few. And it's far too many. I'm the first to tell you. Uh, the regionalism is, is the wave of the present. It is no longer the wave of the future. Uh, we don't have the luxury of competing against our neighbors uh, any longer. Now, at the end of the day, of course, we all come back to our sandbox and we report uh, to, to our boards, our communities, our municipalities. Uh, but uh, we're a very strong believer at the corridor in uh, what's good next door is much better than what's good on the East Coast. So that, that's the perspective that, that uh, informs our decision. So they're prepared for us when we go up to the East Coast to take their jobs and bring them to us. They're, they're probably have a defense for that too. You know? A defense? Well, yeah. What you just said, you know, I mean, uh, if there is ten thousand of these organizations. Certainly, if we're going to go rob jobs from another part of the country, I think I don't think you go overseas too much, do you? Uh, no. Yeah, I think you make trips to Florida, New York, and I mean, the last guy did, the last couple guys. So you bet. they must have a defense mechanism on them. Oh no, there to protect their jobs. Too. Of course, so. much like we do here. Uh, with the uh, if, if we don't retain and expand our existing base, which retention would be defending those jobs, then anything that we accomplish from an attraction perspective rings terribly hollow uh, and wouldn't mean much. Uh, and the nature of the game is uh, the, we, we all prosper when the state and federal economy is growing, but when it has protracted and is relatively flat at the moment, we're all competing against each other. Uh, I, and uh, I, I think that we are better positioned as a community, city Mason City is better positioned in partnering with a sister community in Clear Lake, with a county, uh, to uh, uh, grow our efforts uh, to uh, to compete for those extremely competitive project opportunities. And when is the deadline to to stop having those independent ETCs? I don't know the deadline. I don't know the deadline. And really, we're the the, the EDCs offer you know. If the non nonprofit system, uh, but it's it's free market, so there's not there's not a a, a federal uh, or state level. The last guy made a comment about how many people are involved with the with the EDCs and the growth partnership. That there was quite a few people. Yeah, oh, that. sir. Right. Well, certainly our our leadership team. Is, is, no question. No, I mean, I mentioned we have close to 200 uh, private investors who report to two municipalities and county. Uh, we've, we, we've got a board of directors of which Councilman Nelson is a member, uh, and, and so sir, I mean, there, there, then we've got, we've got staff uh, of four. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of people involved in our efforts. No question. So, so you, would lean and efficiency work for you? Would lean and efficiency work for us? I, I, I think so. I think I think lean lean approaches and processes uh, have different characteristics depending on the industry in which you're you're working. I can tell you we're under I can tell we're we're undergoing. A, an organizational review at our office right now to ensure that we're being as lean and efficient as possible. I don't know that I have license to say that we're, uh, I know that I don't have license to say that we're, we're undertaking a formal uh, lean process, uh, but I can say that we're undergoing an organizational efficiency process. Very interesting. Hello. Hello. Director, thank you very kindly for coming. Thank you. Appreciate very much. You're doing a good job. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to the uh, public forum. The Mayor Council welcome comments from the public on agenda items only. 
uh, you were asked to give your name, address, and agenda item number on the topic you were referring to on the agenda. Please keep your comments concise and limit to five minutes. You know, notice the clock is uh, right up there when uh, we're on the podium. So. Providing the proclamation this evening for National Home Ownership Month. As we all know, home ownership has been a part of the American dream for many years. Having a place to call your own, a home for family, a legacy for the future, is very important to our citizens. By helping um, our citizens move from renter to homeowner through education uh, programs that Consumer Credit provides. <coughs> We teach them the basics so that they get into a good loan so we don't have them uh, getting into a tight situation not being able to stay in the home that they have worked so hard to get. And providing these education programs is part of our commitment to our community. So again, I thank you this evening. And it was item number two. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Point of order here. Uh, you have explained before how the public forum works, and, and I, I didn't hear anything before the meeting. Are some of these folks that want to speak here tonight speaking at their, their item, or are they speaking at the public forum? I don't know that I can answer that, that's what we're Well, okay, then maybe you need to explain how this works then. Actually, I don't understand the, the, the public forum. Anybody can come up and address the public forum as long as there's an item on the agenda that is germane. So this would be the time to speak then, I think is what he's saying. If you have any, if you have anything to say. Thank you. Can you please go to the podium? Good evening. My name is John Wilson. I would like to represent or say that I'm trying to represent the people who have been um, bousted out of their homes here recently. It's a flood without the water is what it is. Uh, we had a landlord here in town that did not keep up on the bills. There was many, many people affected by it. Not just financially, but also um, can I say, um, uh, <coughs> emotionally too, it tore families apart, it hurt a lot of people. I worked for this gentleman, um, tried to get him emails, tried to get him um, voicemails and stuff on things that needed to be done when people would approach me. I was unable to get these to him. He was buying these, con these properties on contract, um, from another gentleman who used to live here in town and now lives out of town. And I did do some of the work for these people and I did what I could. And I want to apologize to the city council and all the city members who have had to deal with all this. Um, maybe I didn't try hard enough. Maybe I, you know, I, I thought I tried extremely hard. I have been in contact with Matt Berkey just recently and um, the damage has been done. And he doesn't blame any of you people or even the council or anything like that. He doesn't blame the city. So what I'd like to say again is I'm sorry for dropping the ball on my part to you people who have lost your homes and are being torn apart and also that uh, financially, emotionally, and uh, if there's anything I can do, all you've got to do is ask. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I 
guess I'm just, my main concern is, you know, we're not a big bunch of crew, but, you know, we have lived there for, I've lived there for five years. That's my home. I had my grandbaby there. I mean, we're, we don't know what we're supposed to do. No one has come in contact with us. The only time we've seen a city councilman was when they tagged our house. I mean, where, where is, uh, we don't know, we want help, we want um, some understanding, because it's like John said, it's mentally, physically, and emotionally, and financially tore us apart. We don't know what we're supposed to do. And um, I, get, I go look at a permit, and I get told by one of the landladies, well, in the paper they said something about there's gonna be help. Well, why hasn't anybody come contacted us at the buildings? That's all I got to say. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me. My name is Andrew Greer. I'm Greer and Griffin. I live, I live at 314 East State Street, Department 3. I'm currently another victim of what's going on. The only uh, council man, 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 member that has been honestly uh, approached this is man, Max Weaver. I want to thank him. I also want to thank man, Matt Marquette for, for, for North, North Iowa to today.com come to uh, uh, come and interview and plus the Globe Gazette and KIMT. They've all been, been uh, very, very much uh, helping in this matter, which concerns the, the apartment complex that we live in today. There have been no other further council members come, come to, to our place, to our doors, to examine what, or even they even voice their opinion as to what, what's been, been happening. We're very concerned. We are all friends. We are all the um, part of this community, and we care uh, very, very much as to well, well, what is happening and how we, we have to, have to get, deal with uh, this uh, situation as it has arisen. And uh, we invite you all as council members to kind of, kind of come over and uh, look at one of what we've had to deal with. We've had to deal with uh, black, um, you know, black mold, uh, filth. Uh, it's just, it's uh, a shame that that has kind of come to this, uh, that uh, the apartments are being foreclosed on. And uh, we have uh, pretty much uh, joined together as friends and basically become pretty much a family, trying, trying to endure what, what, what's happening. And uh, at this point, you know, like April and John, Thank you all for, for saying uh, what you had to say. We love, love, love you all, and uh, we're, we're all, you know, being deeply concerned about, like I said, well, well, what's going on. It's affecting us. We're pulling us apart, sending us in so many directions, and yet we have no answers other than uh, well, what uh, Max Weaver has offered, Matt, and uh, Go Gazette and KMT has been uh, willing to do for us. You know, well, we're pretty much in the dark. Our bills still remain the same. The water is being threatened. We're being threatened by the water being shut off. The electricity, which is anywhere from the 23rd of this month to the 27th, we're asking that and hoping and praying that the city of Mason City will forgive us those debts and allow us to remain in our places until we can find sh shelter from, from the, the, this storm and move, move uh, forward and better ourselves and better our lives and may, make may Mason City proud, 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 proud of the, I was just at Mason City. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm on this bit driver. I'm at 19 North Georgia. I'm with family stage problems too. Um, like John said, we both work with them, trying to get the properties up going. The people don't have to lose their places. Um, I'm another one. We have rotted door, broken windows. Uh, we have major water leaks. I mean, neighbors and everything will be sleeping and water be dripping on them. And he's saying that he's helping us, taking our money, not paying the taxes, not paying the bills. Um, leaving us like we're low income. I mean, we don't have lots of money. We trust and rely on the landlords to help us with 
pay our bills, but he just goes around and does this. I mean, a lot of those people are affected with the white tag and, and the water getting shut off and the electric, and I'm one of them. Um, I've been working with them and John, and he hasn't been paying us, so then that's us and our family now. And now, like I said, the water's gonna be getting shut off. We got family. We don't know what else to do. Um, not too many people have been coming up to us because we're um, right on the side, so we're kind of like not notified of what's going on. Until today, the bank of nine of his properties, the bank's trying to help, but they said it's up to the um, Mason City uh, to see what they can do to help us. Um, like I said, we're all highly uh, affected in it. I feel bad for most of the, the tenants that are around. A lot of the tenants know me. I tried helping them. If they had like broken windows or anything, trying to help, and we all end up getting got screwed by the landlord. And then he says, taking the money and ran. And it's a big affection on the Mason City because now there's a lot of places that are going to be empty, abandoned. That makes it the topography of uh, Mason City look even worse because you got run down places because this slum lord pretty much come in and take people's money, not do nothing, so that makes it, the buildings look bad and abandoned and they've got to get torn down. And that's all I got to really say. Thank you. Seeing none, we'll uh, move on to the uh, consent agenda. <coughs> Number five minutes, regular special and closed minutes of June 7th, and work session minutes of June 2nd, 2011, and special and closed minutes of June 14th, 2011. Number six, claims. Number seven, permits. Number eight, unaudited financial report. Number nine, administrator recommending approval to hire Alan Lambert as street maintenance worker. Number 10, administrator recommending approval authorization as solicit post for the installation of an independent small split system cooling unit for the aquatic center pool concession stand. Number 11, administrator recommending approval of 2% wage increase for non-bargaining employees. B, resolution fixing compensation for certain appointed officials for fiscal year 2011-2012 effective July 1st, 2011. Number 12, Administrator recommending approval resolution approving contract and bond for 2010 CDBG disaster recovery sanitary sewers repairs project. Number 13, Administrator recommending approval resolution contract and bond for the East Park Band Shell exterior restoration project. Number 14, Administrator recommending approval resolution approving change orders 12A and 12B with Hinkle Construction Company for construction of the 19th Street uh, Southwest Overpass project and South Pierce Avenue Intersection Improvement Project. Number 15, Administrator recommending approval resolution authorizing a contract amendment. Supplemental agreement number two with the Agni Colby Associates for construction, observation, survey, and administrative services in conjunction with the 19th Street Southeast and Mason City Creek Culver Widening Project. Number 16, Administrator recommending approval resolution approving contract and bond for construction of the 19th Street uh, Southeast and Mason Creek uh, Culver Widening Project, SDP U 48822. Uh, 6287-17. Number 17, Administrator recommending approval, resolution award of contract, mid-continent contracting, approval of the contract bond, for construction of the new utility box out replacement project, number 9-1013. 18, Administrator recommending approval, flood 2008A, resolution accepting warranty deed from 618 North Maryland Avenue. B, a resolution accepting warranty deed from property located at 631 7th Street Northeast. 19, Administrator recommending approval resolution authorizing the submission of the 2011 Bolt Group Vest Partnership Grant Application to the U.S. Department of Justice to assist with purchase of vest, affirming commitment for local match funds, and author authorizing execution of grant agreement upon application approval. And lastly, uh, 20, Administrator recommending approval resolution authorizing preparation and submission of a Prairie Meadows Community Bank Grant authorizing execution of grant agreement upon application approval. Uh, Council, are there any items that uh, you would like to pull?
Mr. Weaver? Uh, Reverend B. And uh, 16. Just 11. Did you say just 11 B? Yeah, 11 B. And 16, sir? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda with the exception of uh, number 7, 11A, 11 11B, and 16. Any motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Quick call roll. Marsters? Yes. Silver? Yes. Tornquist? Yes. Weaver? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Nelson? Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Number 7, do uh, you have a motion, Mr. Tornquist? Do you have move approval? Is there a second? Second. Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, we were copied on a letter from the Youth Task Force here within the last week or so about how they're working um, to basically rate businesses in the community with surprise uh, drop-ins for conformance. And with the rating system that they're doing, it was apparent that they're also maybe in the future suggesting some permits that not be renewed because of non-compliance. And it occurred to me as I was going through this packet that when we used to get uh, permit renewals, they either had a recommendation from the police chief or a recommendation from the administrator. And at some point in time, we quit doing that. I, I don't really recall when we quit doing it or why we quit doing it. But I guess what I might ask for, or at least um, for the sake of discussion, is might we put a mechanism in place so that the council will know when the packets come before us if there's a recommendation for a permit renewal that may pop up contrary to the good work that the Youth Task Force is doing. I know they've been working with Sheriff Pals, and uh, there's a good consortium of people working together, and, and I would like to be able to do whatever I can do to support that effort. I can, I can let you know that uh, Diana sends these out the police department and the fire department still do their review. We just haven't put anything in the packet. So we've never we've never put those sheets in the packets. Right. So basically if it's if it's on here it's been recommended for approval. Okay. Um, but we can add some language that'll that will show you that so that you're not uh, having to guess as to whether they were recommended for approval or not. Okay. All right. Thank you very much Mr. We've got a motion and a second. Seeing uh, no other comments, Clerk Paul. Tornquist. Yes. Marsters. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Silver. Yes. All right, motion carries. Number 11, A. Mr. Tornquist, do you have a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Tornquist. Yeah, I would just like to put this in context and maybe review a little history of how this came about. Uh, my recollection, uh, Mr. Administrator, was when you and the finance director made your initial budget recommendation on the operating side of the ledger last January. You were recommending a 1% increase for non-bargaining employees. Yes, that's correct. And it's my recollection that we, we went from 1% to 2% based on council initiative. Yes, there was a suggestion made that we consider a 2% increase. And if, if I could ask Kevin a question here real quick. I just would like you to confirm, Mr. Director. My understanding is when we went from 1% to 2%, that basically added $43,000 in expense to our operating budget. That's a pretty good estimate, yes. Okay, and from your perspective, you know, we often ask you for, for your advice and counsel on return on investment. From your perspective, does this $43,000 expense have any financial return on investment? Well, you're paying wages to employees, and I guess the only return would be to keep those employees around. Uh, but from a standpoint, like if you're looking from a business model, 
really isn't a return on investment no. So I guess when you say keep them around, that presupposes that if they don't get the increment of one percent, they might leave. Of course, we could backfill them, but sure, that's, um, that's always a possibility. We have people come and go. Basically, for that incremental one percent, we still have the same people doing the same work. That's correct. Okay. What What I want people to understand is we went through. We, we had roughly half the council that, or maybe less, that supported the incremental one percent. We also had a group on the council that were strong advocates for the microenterprise program, which you've heard a lot about. And so we did some give and take. We bargained, we negotiated. And in the end, uh, those of us that wanted the microenterprise basically agreed to the incremental 1%. We agreed to the incremental $43,000 added to the operating budget in exchange for $15,000 that was going to fund the setup of what we call the microenterprise program. So basically, those, that had us, those of us that gave on this 1% gave three times more than what we asked for in return, 15000 versus 43000 And what's interesting to me is that $15,000 is one of the only expenses that we have on the operating budget that has a uh, foreseeable potential for positive return on invest investment that's through job creation and job growth. And in fact, the program was bigger. We also set aside one hundred fifty thousand. Well, point of order, Mayor. I, I, you know, this has happened to me at the last council meeting. They point of order me when I was trying to explain my point, bringing in another whole issue again, and you stopped me. I'm asking you now. What we've got before us tonight is not anything to do with micro enterprise, fifteen percent, or how well it's going to be, or return on investment. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. So Mr. I would Weaver. call a point of order here and either ask a question or... I, I appreciate your point of order, Mr. Weaver, but it's pretty clear that this 2% was linked to the microenterprise program, so please let the council member continue. Thank you for stopping the clock. The microenterprise program was the only initiative in the budget that had the potential for positive return to the taxpayers through job creation. And in fact, the 150000 that was set aside would not be paid out at, except in the form of reimbursements. That is to say, while some want to call it a $165,000 program, the only money that's ever been at risk is $15,000 to set up the program because the $150,000 was for reimbursement. That is to say, if new monies were not spent, then there were no receipts to justify that reimbursement. So in fact, if none of the $150,000 was ever spent, that meant the program wasn't working. The only amount that was ever at risk was $15,000. Now, I'm going to support this tonight because I bargained in good faith. I can only control myself, but my understanding of the meeting that we had that day in City Hall was we were trading an incremental 1% for the microenterprise program. I don't think it would be fair to put staff in the middle of a council problem. This is really a council issue. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't think that would be the right thing to do. But I continue to be upset, not so much that we haven't put the microenterprise program in place, uh, but I continue to be upset with what I perceive as a violation of trust and the, the negotiating that we all did as we agreed on a final budget. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Anybody else? Mr. Marshall. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say this, but I sure wish people would abide by democracy and the vote took place on microenterprise and quit criticizing other people. Thank you, Mayor. And I agree, Mr. Weaver, he was out of order speaking about something completely different in the agenda. Mr. Nelson. Well, I agree with Councilman Weaver and uh, being out of order and Councilman Marsters. I guess my only response to Mr. Kornquist would be, uh, and I pushed hard for the 2%, uh, might as well mention my name. Um, I think it's about fairness. You know, union gets a certain amount, the non-union should get the equal amount. I preach that, and I think it's pretty well during my 11 years on city council, it's about fairness, treated all equal. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Well. <coughs> All right. 
Seeing none, we've got a motion and a second. Proposal. Marquist. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Silver. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Marsters. Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you, Council. 11B, resolution fixing compensation for certain appointed officials for fiscal year 2011-2012, effective July 1st, 2011. Mr. Weaver, do you have a motion? Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hickey, for the second. Mr. Hornquist, would you like to open? No. Mr. Hickey. Anybody else? Mr. Weaver. Yeah, I, I was just curious. Uh, could somebody interpret Section 3 for me? You know what? I, I read this. I'm sure I've seen this before, but what does that mean? Really, could somebody break that down for me? I could have an understanding of that. And, and then uh, two, I just have a question. Uh, I suppose they have separate contracts, the uh, city administrator and the uh, human resources <laughs> attorney slash the attorney. And when do those come before us? As far as the, the section, not a legal expert, but... Uh, well, we have a legal expert in the right. right. And, but my understanding of it is that relative to the fact that if one part was deemed to be ruled unconstitutional, um, the other parts stay in place. Well, what, what does this got to do with being unconstitutional? I, it's, explain it to me. It's a standard art. It's a standard part of many relevant <laughs> ordinances. But as far as the contracts relative to uh, myself, City Attorney Meyer, um, Mr. Meyer decided not to take an increase this year, so his won't be before the council normally. It would be in this location, and mine is related to the approval of the. Well, my contract, which means that whatever non-union receives an increase, that's the increase that I receive. Mm -hmm. What, uh, you want me to read this section three, or, or do you want to read it? I probably should, it's slower, because you'll just read to go through it like it was, uh, you know, a carpenter with his hammer. If any section, provision, or part of this resolution shall be adjudged to be invalid or unconstitutional, such, such adjudication, adjudication shall not affect the validity of the resolution of whole, or any section thereof, or part thereof, not adjudged invalid or unconstitutional. Hey, what, what does that mean, actually? Uh, it's only simple, but what is it? This, Mr. Weaver, is boilerplate standard language in our resolutions and ordinances. If a court would ever say that any of this is unconstitutional, any part of a resolution, obviously this is a simple resolution. That the, the remainder that is not determined to be unconstitutional will still be valid. Or so, so this piece of paper here could be unconstitutional. No. All right. So I was wondering. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't understand the guy. You know, I'm going to be. You know. And I got my other answer uh, that uh, you're going to receive two percent, and Mr. Meyer, for whatever reason, is not taking an increase this year. That's correct. Right. Right. That's accurate, yes. Okay. Hey, Mr. Weaver. Anybody else? Right. We've got a motion and a second. Call the roll. Tarnquist? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Marsters? Yes. Silver? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Weaver? Yes. Thank you, Council. Number 16, the Administrator recommending approval resolution approving the contract and bond for construction of the Night East Street, Southeast, and Mason City Creek over widening project. Mr. Weaver, you have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mars. Now, the question I would have is, is that the, the neighborhood there that's being impacted by this, as I think all you council members know, have been very active, more active than most neighborhoods, coming and going. I think they met last week with, with the uh, one of the uh, engineers in City Hall. I think they wanted to talk to Brent. I don't, I don't know if you were there or not around. Uh, they were in, they've been in, they've been very active. Uh, the people that live on 19th Street, I think they've talked to all of us. Well, somewhere along the way, I, I didn't see it or read it. I, I don't really read all the plans to a T, uh, but they're very disturbed about the telephone pole. And I am too, quite frankly. I don't understand it. We're, we're, there, we're actually gonna end up, I think, with more telephone poles. 
And then, and then I see that the Clear Lake, you know, as Mr. Collins was over there last night from Alliant Energy, talking about how they're burying uh, their power and doing that. And this is a main street, primary street through the city. And uh, I guess we must have missed that. We must not have talked about burying the utilities. Because what they're doing is, is they're taking, they're leaving some poles on the south, on the north side, I believe. And they're putting poles on the south side too and starting to chop up the trees. Now, I think one resident got so uh, frustrated that they're paying out of their own pocket to bury the lines to the house to save more tearing into, you know, we had Mr. Hardy here the other night at the last meeting talking about that they're really not following their true, uh, how they take care of those trees. But if it caught those residents off guard, these poles being put over there, and, and, and there's some other things too that I'm not gonna mention here tonight, but the, that they've told me, uh, but from the workers there and stuff, that, you know what, I don't know how we missed that. And uh, I don't think it looks, it doesn't look good. And not to mention, you know those poles? Those poles are within inches of the sidewalk. And of course you're gonna say, well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, you know what, I just saw a little guy down on the 300 block of 19th Street I was more concerned about him being barefoot, but his family was putting him on a bicycle to learn how to ride. And I gotta tell you, with a telephone pole that close, there's a liability. I think I mentioned something like that about the water shut off in front of the rails. And I notice now it's six feet, there's a water shut off six feet away from the door instead of six inches. So these poles, looking at them this weekend, and they all have wires going down too, got the, the to hold the poles, I, mean, I think we must have missed something. And, and if there was any communication that we could still do, or, or you know what, even an addendum, if, if we talked to Alliant, Mr. Collins was so friendly at Clear Lake the other night with burying the power, that maybe we can do this for those three blocks of houses. Or, and they're putting, I think these are drop poles they're putting, where there was no drop poles. They came right off of the south side, came to their houses. Now they're putting drop poles in. And it's not being very well received at all. They're pretty frustrated. And I just said, I'll mention something about it. And I would hope council could maybe at least go out there and take a look at what I'm talking about. It's not, it's not good. It doesn't look good at all. So I, I, would, I would hope we would have a chance yet here because they haven't, they haven't put all the poles in yet. And uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the, the negotiations were rough or the neighborhood fought too hard or, that's the comments I'm getting from the neighborhood. What did we do wrong, you know? And I think they came in legitimately last Thursday to talk. I ended up talking to Mr. Olney. So, and I don't know if City Hall has all the answers there either, but, you know, as I'm going to show you later, that's what we do up here. We're not about team building and, and uh, taking care of each other. We're, we're about representing the citizens and, and, and all their issues. And they've got, they've got a legitimate issue. I, I know for a fact, well, you don't have any, some of our neighborhoods don't have any poles or wires. So they're, they're fine. Evidently, there's a reason to not have poles and wires. It, it looks good. It makes the neighborhood look better, and we like it. But now go look at these poles, will you? And, and, and it may be, I'm asking Mr. Child to do something about it. You're, you're helping other neighborhoods, you say. Uh, I would hope you'd help this neighborhood, too. I don't think it's too late. I'm not sure. I think the cost was a thousand bucks to bury the wire from the from that parking to the house. <coughs> I'm not. I'm not even sure of that it, it was pretty frustrating for everybody. So I, I hope we can do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. I don't think the city would approve if somebody had to get a permit to put a pole in. I don't think the city would approve to put it right next to the sidewalk. I don't think we would do that. I don't think we would agree to do that. We we tell them that no, that's a it's potential liability because it's on city property. Well, now we're asking these people to take the responsibility because it's on city property. These poles are just inches away from the sidewalk. Thank you. Check it out. I hope you check it out. Thank you. Did you want to yes, I'll respond. Um, yes, I'll inquire as to the construction plans that they had. When it comes to varying lines within different residential areas, that's the responsibility of the developer to pay the additional cost. The line will pay for the cost for an overhead line, and the bearing of the lines is the responsibility of the developer. So that's why a lot of developments are like that. Yeah. Um, what their plans were um, and what was shared with us regarding their construction plans in that area, I can't say for sure. I know that I wasn't it wasn't discussed with me, but I'm sure 
uh, some type of presentation was done as to where. Yeah, no, I missed it. I didn't hear about the polls. I missed it. My mistake too. And, and the residents were very active. They must have missed it too. Time's expired. Right, well, Thank you. But that and I hope it gets right. Council, I'll check into it and let you know. I'll let the entire council know. Anybody else? <coughs> All right. Got a motion and a second. Or follow up. Weaver? Yes. Marsters? Yes. Silver? Yes. Tornquist? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Number 21. Uh, Mr. Chair, recommending approval ordinance amending the city code by repealing Title IX, Chapter 4, speed regulations, Section 1, speed restrictions, and adopting a new Section 1 in lieu thereof. Increase the speed from 25 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour as 15th Street Southwest from Federal Avenue to Monroe Avenue. This will be on first reading. Is there a so, so moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Weaver, would you like to go? No, this has been on the table for years. Uh, I think I first brought it up back in the 90s. And uh, I think a, a couple people that, lived, that used it all the time brought it up four years ago. And, and uh, I appreciate whoever finally got around to doing this. I think it's, I think it's a pretty good idea. Well, it was, it was from your request to... It's been a long time ago, Brandon. How long ago was that, Brandon? No, a more recent request. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. I, I put a couple requests in, but uh, you know how it is. You get tired, tired fighting City Hall, you know. But I appreciate whoever had the political capital to get it on here tonight. I support it 100%. Hey, Mr. Ray, Ray, Anybody else? Ms. Holder? in my award, so I did bring it forth too. Um, Good job. But one thing that I really, uh, thank you for bringing this, but I, I was thinking more 35 miles an hour. Is that yeah. out of the Please. realm of things? Or? I, can, I can respond to and that. The street that we're talking about here, just so everybody knows, it's between South Monroe and Highway 65, Correct. and it's 15th Street Southwest, so it goes by the Ford dealership <laughs> and then um, comes out by Luz's car wash there. So. Well, the logic that we used, it was almost uh, the decision to recommend 35, but when the speed study was done, uh, the 85th percentile, which is a measurement of all the speeds, uh, it was determined that uh, the 85th percentile was 34 miles an hour. And the engineering recommendation is never to round up, but to round down. So that's why 30 miles per hour was picked. The other issue that we have is we hope for development to occur where the old Hobby Lobby old target was. And if that occurs, we'll expect a lot of returning traffic <coughs> at that location. And so therefore, it was recommended for those two reasons, uh, city engineers recommending that it be 30 miles per hour. Can we bump it to 35 till we get some development in there? It's within the city council's power to change, to set the speed limit at whatever they would like. So, you know, we give our recommendation regarding the analysis that was done by the city engineer and, uh, and then let you make the decision. We do have the extra lane on each the north and the south side. Is there any way to bump the north lane over so you still have that extra turning on the south side? Um, well, I guess it would just only help the yeah, it would help, traffic. It would help some if we made some modifications with regards to striping. Uh, we have something similar to that on Northwest First, but um, at this point, I think that uh, keeping a center line is probably the better choice. Um, my question I would have would be for you. Who's in the big group? You are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just responding to a question from I'm another just, council I'm person. just curious if, if there would be enough support for 35 miles an hour. Well, you, can I always, can, you can always amend the motion. <laughs> no, I, I can help it out. Help her out here. Okay. Well, okay. Don't, don't appreciate it. Don't give me too. I know this is my time. This I think I'm going to leave it for right now. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Seeing now, everybody wants your job, Mayor. We've got a, <laughs> got a motion and a second. We'll call the roll. This on first read. Weaver. Yes. Silver. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Torquist. Yes. Marsters. Yes. All right. Thank you, Council. 
Number 22, Administrator recommending approval authorize the payment of $500 to Dennis Ritter for the demolition of the shed and damage to his property resulting from repair work on the water line. Mr. Stratton, this one um, Yes, the comments that I have is that um, through the process of analyzing this, uh, I looked at a number of different factors, and the primary one that I looked at when I made the decision is that um, when I looked at it, it, was the damage or expense cost to the citizen by the actions of the city Mason City that occur from no fault of their own? And when we analyzed the information that's provided, based on the location of the shed, it was within the city's easement. Uh, and so at that point, then, it is in an incorrect spot, and it's the responsibility of the property owner to uh, locate the easements that exist within their property and not place any of uh, their buildings or structures or anything that they would not want to have to tear down outside of that easement. And so for that reason, I was not interested in or not supportive of recommending uh, a larger sum for the purpose of uh, the moral obligations insurance. But I also realized also that um, we did cause damage and we had to do a repair in his yard and there was damage that was caused. And so I felt it's important to provide some type of compensation to him, so that's why I recommended a $500. Um, and to use the uh, water fund in order to make that payment rather than moral obligations insurance. Provided some pictures, referenced the easements, which are in the pink, and uh, some pictures of the shed, and locations of the hole where the water line was repaired at. So um, with that, I guess that's my recommendation at this point. Council can make a decision to approve whatever amount they desire. Thank you, Mr. Trout. Is there a motion? Well, I'll so move. I'll so, I'll so, so move on the payment of a thousand dollars. Second. Is that a second? Okay. Mr. Weaver, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Mr. Ritter was asking two thousand, and uh, we're, we're not totally sure what happened out there. We, we've heard everything from everybody, and uh, quite frankly, this is what I know. When they did this job here at the library. They had trouble with easements. They didn't know what they were finding. They, they were surprised. I think you probably know that, uh, where, the, where the water sewer was and stuff. Matter of fact, we had issues right out here that we discovered some others, and, and then the, the sewer was blocked. And um, quite frankly, nobody in the city, not an engineering office or second floor, can guarantee where any of the easements are at or where pipes are lie. And, uh, and, and if we're not doing that good a job right now, marking the, what we're putting in and cattle, cat, categorizing them, or cataloging them, uh, which I've heard from some of the contractors and uh, some staff that, that that's not being done completely. And two, I just want to say I recollect back in the 90s, this happened a block away to several houses. And uh, we found ourselves in a similar situation with uh, a couple sheds, trees, plants, shrubs, fence that was not supposed to have been there or built over there either or even planted. And uh, we replaced everything there. And uh, I think that was Councilman Kenny Lee, DeVos Ricky, and uh, two or three other houses on Brook Terrace, just one block to the east of them. So I don't think we're, and, and plus I did ask the staff member, uh, could this happen again out here? Do we know where everything's at and where everything, and the, the answer I got was no, 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 I, I, can't, I can't say that. I mean, I can't say that we're not, other things aren't built over. And, and you know, where did that permission come from? PNZ back 30 years ago, 20 years ago, or whatever. So. I guess I'm going to side with Mr. Ritter. He's, he wanted $2,000 $2, worth of the damage. I think he's proven his case somewhat. And uh, you just said there was some damage done out there. And uh, so I'm going, to, I'll, I'll, I'm going to stick with what I agreed to a month before it got tabled or pulled, $1,000. I think there was four of us that said we'd do $1,000. So I'm going, to, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to keep my word on that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Anybody else? Well, I'll tell you what I know. Two months ago, Mr. Weaver gave me a call, asked me to go out to Mr. Ritter's site with him, and I met him out there. Um, we went and seen it, and yeah, some of his yard was tore up. Um, I don't know the logistics-wise of whether he was on an easement or not, but the part that really kind of disturbed me about the whole thing was he had some damage, um, and I, I just don't know whether he was at fault or the city was at fault, and I'm not blaming anyone one way or the other. But the thing that I did see when I was there, um, about two weeks later, Mr. Weaver approached me at City Hall and said, hey, what are we going to do? 
we're going to do anything for Mr. Ritter. And I says, well, I'll talk to Brent about it and we'll move forward and, and see what we can get done. In that time, Max told me that uh, we better do something. This is consuming Mr. Ritter. He's went through a lot, and I agree with him. I think he did. And he told me also, he said, if we don't do this, one of us may get a bullet in the head. Now, when that was told to me, I found that very disturbing that I took that serious. And I said, what do you mean? And he's like, well, it's not going to be me. I can tell you that. And if it does happen, it's going to go to the papers, and I want to squeal. And I'm going to turn you all, make you look bad. Well, I took that pretty seriously. And in that time, I went to the mayor, I went to Mr. Trout, um, Mr. Lashbrook got involved, and uh, I think some statements were took. And the one thing that I think, in talking to the chief, is he asked me if Mr. Ritter was capable of this, and I told him no. I said I didn't think so. I thought it was just Max being Max, and uh, and I think I think Mr. Ritter got put in a poor place because of this, and that's one reason I'm supportive of this because I think uh, the statements that were made, um, from what I've heard, Mr. Weaver then said that uh, after talking to the chief that uh, Mr. Ritter didn't say it, and he was just saying it. You know, I take it pretty seriously. We all see all the different things that happen throughout the United States, different people doing different things, and uh, every one of us up here has family, every one of us up here has kids. Uh, as a result of this, I don't know if people in the audience or on TV notice, but we've had extra uh, police officers on hand. Um, I take this very seriously, and I just, um, I'm kind of upset. I think Mr. Weaver had some poor decision making when he made them statements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. No else. So. I happened to stop in the City Hall shortly after those encounters as well, and, and Mr. Weaver was in there, and Mr. Trout was standing there, and uh, um, Mr. Weaver. Mr. Trout, myself, um, and all of a sudden, Max was like, we we got to make this statement to Mr. Ritter, or, you know, or somebody's going to get a bullet in the head. It, was that not what was said, Mr. Trout? Yes. And that's that's exactly right. I, I am worried about their safety. Um, their safety in our schools, that Max two weeks ago said he wasn't worried about, you know, safety in our school buses, everything like that. Uh, the only cameras... You know, we, we talked about school cameras and stuff like that. Mr. Weaver was told to Point of order, that Mayor, stuff. again, Two what's this got to do with school and the cameras? The only camera Mr. that Weaver? Mr. Weaver's worried about oh is the one that's It's in election year, tonight. folks, and I, mean, I tell you what. Mr. Weaver. Why don't you have Mr. Ritter come to the microphone? Mr. Mr. Weaver. Weaver. Tell us and I do have Mr. to know for a fact. Who's an assist, Mr. Weaver? You're all psychologists now. I appreciate that, Mr. Weaver. Mr. Weaver. Ms. Solberg, please. You want to have a conversation in the Chief's office tomorrow, I'll bring Mr. Ritter in, and we'll finish that conversation. If I can't think out loud with what I know, with my colleagues, well, then that's a problem, too. Mr. Weaver. But you're all professional psychologists. I appreciate that. Mr. Weaver, I'm going to give you this warning right now. We're doing the right thing by paying Mr. Ritter his damages. Mr. Weaver. What are you going to do? I'm calling you to order. Yeah? Yes. And what? Ms. Holbrook is going to continue her time. The request in here for city council action was for $500 payment to Mr. Ritter. Um, Mr. Weaver brought it to the table for a $1,000 payment. Not quite sure what happened between the $500 and the $1,000. But I guess I'd like to almost take this one step further and say, well, if I just saw Mr. Ritter's estimate a little bit ago, and it was like for $1,700. So I'm not quite sure why half of that is $1,000. You know, where I went to school, it would be more, you know, like, 850 or something like that. But anyway, um, maybe we should take this one step further and say as long as he provides us $2,000 in receipts, then we'll give him the $1,000. I mean, if, if we're wanting to give him half of this and pay it out of our taxpayer dollars, he can provide us the receipts and then we'll reimburse him half. Thank you. Nobody else? All right, got a motion for thousand uh, dollars. I have a response. Sure. I got one more thing I want to add to this. It even gets better. When I was there at Mr. Ritter's place, Max told Mr. Ritter, he said, I want one thing from you if I give you this thousand dollars. Mr. Ritter says, What's that? And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ritter. He says, 
I want a political yard sign in that front yard of yours on Sarah Road away come November. And you know what? It's not right. Um, I question your motivation on helping Mr. Ritter on this issue. Uh, it's supposed to be about the citizens, but I don't think it's been that way. That's where I'm at. Wow, okay. I get your Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Mr. Ricky. I really do. Mr. Weaver, do you? Uh, well, that was clearly a joke because Mr. Ritter had, is it Mr. Ritter? He got seven or eight yard signs laying in the yard. He the signs in the last 20 years and they're still out there. Yeah, he had all kinds of yard signs in the yard. Well, I want a yard sign in my yard. It was clearly a joke. But you know what, uh, Travis, we're all seeing what you really are and who you're working hard for. You know what, why don't you leave that stuff off the council table and out of the citizens' business? If you can't, as much as you hang out at the bars and drink and joke, don't, you know the difference between a joke and somebody that's making a threat. Now you're accusing me of blackmailing Mr. Mr. Ritter. Did you take it as a blackmail, Mr. Ritter? I didn't think anything about it. He didn't think anything about it. How do you like that, Travis? Now putting words in Mr. Ritter's mouth and mine, you're an amateur psychologist, and also what, you're his, his, his son? There's something wrong here with what's going on here between the two of you. And I never said anything about giving 50% or whatever. And if you want to have a meeting at the police department tomorrow with Mr. Ritter, I'll finish your statements for you tonight, and then I'll expect you to make an apology to me and the community and Mr. Ritter for bringing up what you brought up tonight. You know what? You should worry about taking care of your own uh, ward, Travis. That's in your ward. I had to call you. That's the bigger issue. That, that's in Jan Solberg and yours ward, and I had to call you to get involved. I appreciate that, Travis. I see what you're doing. This is an election year. Mayor, can I make a point of order? Uh, are you concluded, Mr. Rivers? <coughs> Mr. Marshall. Well, it's always been policy at the city council table to refrain from personal attacks and to stop the personal attacks. And I witnessed three people make personal attacks, and I think it should have been stopped at the start. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate your comments. I personally do not think they were really personal attacks or representation of the events that they saw. So. Anybody else? Motion to extend debate. Is there a second? A second. I would say oh, a second. Uh, we got to vote. Um, I'll let the clerk call the roll on this. We have a motion to second to extend debate. Mickey? Yes. Silver? Yes. Marsters? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Yes. Weaver? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Okay. Well, I'm sorry if you feel it was a personal attack for Mr. Marsters. Um, I would take a bullet to the head as personal attack any day, I guess. Um, Mr. Marsters, Mr. Marsters. I've said the facts that have happened pertaining to Mr. Ritter and the issue of the gallery. And these were comments that were made. I haven't brought up more that was said because I do have more, but when it was said, and it wasn't said or not, Mr. Ritter. I know she doesn't like that. No. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, go. The yard side, was that not said? the yard side? I had a yard side note for you a couple years ago. I This is all these other people. Please don't ask. Everyone call the order. Please don't ask anybody in the, in the gallery. So, but anyway, I'm sorry. I took it serious. And uh, if you can't handle it, you shouldn't have said it. And uh, I found it very inappropriate when you said it. And I think everybody else here should have took it serious and found it inappropriate as well. If he did say it, and he didn't have that intention. Why would you even say it in the first place? Okay. Thank you, Mr. This is awesome. Well, I think the lesson here is this. When you get a call or meet with a fellow council member, be careful what you say. It's unfortunate that we can't say things one-on-one -on -one without being repeated, even if it's joking or not joking. Um, I, what went on tonight is unbelievable, and I, I, I assume Councilman Weaver was joking. He jokes like we all do. I've made statements of that nature uh, in a joking manner, and I hope that we just stop this, bringing what so-and-so said privately or on the telephone to me. That isn't what we're here for. We're here to do the citizens' business, aren't we? We didn't do a very good job on this last agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Oh, I'll stop now. It's over. I am going to agree with Mr. Hickey on this. First off, I want to mention that I did happen to drive by Mr. Ritter's house because I was parked across the street and observed uh, Mr. Ritter visiting with Mr. Hickey and Mr. Weaver and uh, Travis' the son happened to be there as well. 
And uh, comments like this just really hit hard. You know, it, it comes at you. It could hit your family. And innocent bystanders. Do these people at Columbine or anywhere else, did they, have, did they want to take this seriously? Absolutely. This is not a joke. Sorry, folks, there's no joke here. This is serious stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Solberg. Anyone else out here? All right, we got a motion and a second. I believe that is on $1,000, correct? Correct. Clerk Caldwell, by Wait. the gallery, please. Yes. Uh, Marsters? Yes. Tarnquist? Yes. Solberg? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Hickey? Yes. All right, thank you, Council. Number 23, Council Member Weaver recommending approval to direct staff to work with the neighborhoods to resolve some of their water and garbage issues. Mr. Trout, would you like to give us an update on the situation? Well, the, the situation currently is that um, the staff has went through on Friday and hit these properties as far as garbage collection. Um, we've worked already with, uh, uh, with Kevin Jacobson and the Finance Department reference the water bills, and at this point, uh, none of the properties that are related to Mr. Hammond will be shut off. Uh, we will basically wait until those individuals that live there move. Um, hopefully they're able to find accommodations, uh, uh, but we'll work with them. Uh, hopefully by the end of July they'll have that accomplished. And, but we'll continue to work with them uh, you know, through that time period and uh, to accomplish that. I also heard from today from the Lion Energy spokesman and they intend to honor the same commitment that we have, reference electrical. And uh, so right now we're going to be continuing to work with them, reference which property owners or which locations they are, and uh, get that accomplished. Obviously, we want to thank Bolt Services for agreeing to pick, continue to pick up garbage after we've got it cleaned up. Um, as far as issues relative to uh, the conditions that existed in some of the places, I think that uh, we need to continue to put the good word out that um, the rental housing inspector is there. If you have problems with your landlord and there are issues that need to be repaired, we have, uh, you can file a complaint and they'll come and investigate and determine whether or not they're, they're being compliant. And so, you know, please take advantage of that. That's why we have that system. Um, my understanding from Mason City Housing Authority was that uh, there are still three left that are still looking for places. And uh, hopefully, where everything works right, they think they'll have somewhere for them by the end of the month. And uh, so that's where I'm at right now. Hmm? Right, and if, if a location is white tag, we worked with uh, Lionel Foster and he brought forward to us that there was a, remind us there was a provision in the code that if we white tag a particular resident uh, apartment complex that you're not required to pay the rent until that uh, situation is fixed. And so uh, we're trying to make sure that individuals understand that if they are white tagged, that, that that is possible, uh, that they don't have to pay the rent until their situation is fixed. All right, thank you, Mr. Trout. Good work. Does, uh, I, make a motion? I would still uh, make a motion just for the record, and uh, if you don't want to pass it, that's fine. I still have a couple things I'd like to talk about. All right, I can do it at the microphone. But I'd make a motion that we direct staff uh, to continue to work with the neighborhood. Uh, and the motion, as, as you have in here, is direct staff to work with neighborhoods to resolve some of their water and garbage issues. It mm -hmm. sounded like they were resolved, did it not? I uh, know, I'm not sure they were, but I'm making a motion that uh, okay. we direct so, staff to. Okay. Could I make a friendly amendment? amendment? Sure. sure. Uh, I'd also like to have a letter sent to the residents right. yeah. explaining the details for those who are not present or left already. Yeah. Friendly amendment. That's, I'm going to be speaking to that in just a second. Is there, is there, is there a second? Okay. Mr. Weaver, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you know what, I, I, I got the phone call from Cindy uh, last uh, week, and um, I think she also called uh, two or three media outlets, and I, I, was, I showed up and I talked to them, and they hadn't heard from anybody from the city. And I talked to them on Friday again, and I talked also today, and they haven't talked to anybody from the city. They haven't been in, in touch with anybody, but they, they hear and they read about that all their problems have been resolved, so your amendment is absolutely correct is that they haven't talked to anybody from the city. No one's shown up out there that they know of that's knocked on their door. And actually, what you said tonight about Alliant, I think they have, what I witnessed was they pulled two meters from, from some apartments already. They shut the power off. People are living without power. So that already has happened, right? That might be new to you, but 
So there's a lot of miscommunication, almost like every issue we have here at the city council level, that the things don't add up or, you know, how, how it goes. So my point tonight is, is it, and Jeff, your amendment is, is a very friendly amendment, that we keep in touch with them via mail or stop by uh, and visit with, because what I've heard today, they haven't talked to anybody. They haven't seen any representation from the city, city council, but they, they hear their lives are going to be perfect. And two, I want to say, when I was first there, and the reason I put it on the agenda, and Mr. Trout called me Friday morning and asked me if I would be willing to take it off the agenda, this issue, and I told Brent then too, Travis, I want to pay attention that she might be able to correct me. Uh, I said, uh, one, one lady so just beautifully told me that, you know, this is our flood without the water. And when I was there, and everybody I talked to, and the things that I saw, it was, it was pretty close, now on the head. I didn't take any offense to that at all. They didn't know what hit them. So I would hope that we pass this tonight, that we that we continue to work with them and uh, be in touch with them and talk to them. And maybe, have you been out there, Brent? No, I haven't. There's uh, 57 properties, Brent, <coughs> close to 80 people. And it's not just on East State Street, two blocks from the mayor's house, and two blocks away from a $50 million uh, investment downtown. You might want to check those figures, too. But anyway, uh, so I think it's important for many reasons to help out here. So I, I would hope that you guys uh, pass this tonight. Well, I'd just like to request, and I would expect you would anyways, Mr. Trout, but we get copy of the same information that the residents are sent. You sure? Thank you. Hey, Mr. Marshalls. Who else down here? Mr. Trump, please. Yeah, I'd just like to thank staff for the efforts that you've made here in the past week. I think this problem caught, caught all of us by surprise. It caught you guys by surprise, and obviously it caught all of us by surprise, and I think you've made a lot of progress in the past week, and I appreciate the efforts that you've done. And in fact, um, staff has gone over and above what you would normally expect um, city government to do in a private issue, and I think it's very good that we've intervened. Um, obviously, you need some help beyond your means, and, and I believe that staff has really stepped up to the plate and will continue to do so, and I appreciate that. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is, is and, and I don't want to come across as scolding, but I need to be honest with you, it bothered me a little bit that there were criticisms that you haven't seen more council persons. And what I'd like to share with you is at any point in time, most of us have more issues stacked up than we can deal with and we have to prioritize. And when this issue came to my attention last week, it was very apparent to me that staff was all over it. Yeah, there's still some things to do, but staff is aware of those things and they're working on it. And so from my perspective, it was under control. And I've got enough to do that I don't need to go looking for problems. If you need me, call me. I return every phone call, I return every email. When people ask for me, 641-425-3185. That's my work number. It's a cell phone. If you don't get me, leave a message. If you need me, I'll come. Max mentioned he was out last week because you called him. Nobody's called me. I just want to add to that that all of our numbers can be uh, the deputy clerk Diana. If you call City Hall, all of our numbers are there. If you don't want to, you know, we're not in the phone books, whatever. They know how to get a hold of us. Please call us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alright, well, we've got a motion and a friendly amendment uh, for the letters. Second. Oh, Weaver? Yes. Marsters? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Tarquist? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Solberg? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, council has some business to attend to in closed session. As upon a firm of uh, vote of the City Council, Council may go into closed session pursuant to Chapter 21.5.1C, Code of Iowa, discuss strategy with Council and matters that are presently in litigation or where litigation is imminent, where its disclosure will be likely to prejudice or disadvantage the position of the government body in that litigation. Uh, can we have a motion and a second? To can I ask a question first, Mayor? Yeah, please. Is there any reason we want to, we can have to make all these people wait for right. the public input session, not televised afterwards? This is just happens to be the agenda, sir. Well, I don't think we can We alter it. We alter it all the time. I can't see making people. You altered it for five minutes. Minutes. For minutes. meetings ago. You changed the agenda. We're asking you that too. I don't understand. It's just a request, Mayor. That's all. It just seems ridiculous since no pain in the ass here from uh, somebody out of town. Council. Yeah. 
Anybody want to, before we take this, you want to take a motion and a second for a recess? So that we can do that? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay, I move to recess. That's good. Second. Okay. Hey, all stick around. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. I'm going to rat off on Travis Sicky. I got an issue I want to explain to you about that. You can sit through the embarrassment now. Can we go right into the, we're going right into the public? Stick around, stick around and hear good I said this 20 years ago at this microphone here, up, up, up to the second floor, over at the old city hall, up the new city hall, I said it. You attack me, you put me in the corner, and you'll be sorry. Because I got nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. Not nothing at all. My thing is an open book. When you got a big mouth like me, you better have it that way. And if you live in a glass house, don't be throwing rocks. And a lot of you do. I don't. And I got nothing to hide, nothing I, that, that, that I, I, I got it. My closet's bare, and some of your closets ain't. And I'm just saying, this, this is getting to be ridiculous. And if this is going to be taken on, you're going to be taking notes on each other. This is what's going to happen to cannibalization. Well, you know what? Maybe you do deserve a new council. And maybe you will get the, the government that you deserve, too. And maybe you'll get the guys right shotgun with you, too. This whole thing of plotting and planning and wanting to, to get your guys on the council and run for re-election and get our team in place and do that has nothing to do with taking care of the citizens of Mason City. All that has to do with it is, is decorum, diligence, and discipline in keeping these meetings down, tight, and everything our business. Well, I tell you what, from time and time again, you prove it up here. That you guys are not on top of your game. You did it tonight. You did it last council meeting. Every council meeting, there's so many questions that could be asked if we had the time. And you guys would show your ignorance about the issues and what's going on. I see it all the time. And you know what? You back me in the corner, and I am an ass. And everybody knows it. Everybody who's come before you, Travis, 30 years before you, knows that. You know what? You'd be do yourself more favors, all of you. I think Mr. Tornquist kind of has to understand who Mr. Weaver is. I've taken the time to understand who all you are. I know who Scott Tornquist is, I tell him all the time. He's the smartest guy up there. He's one of the smartest guys we've ever elected. Very cerebral. That doesn't make him the greatest guy up there. But when he says something, I listen and I trust him. You guys, what I've seen in the last two years, you haven't brought nothing forward, nothing railroad, the noise of the railroad. I could give you 10 issues that I've been called on in both your wards that you should be taking care of. And, and, and you know, it's wrong. Why don't you? It's wrong. Hey, it's got time. Mayor, please. I got it. I have. Go take care of the water problem out on Pierce. Nobody deserves to live with a 40-foot puddle in front of their house and driveway their whole life. 
But because they were involved in drugs somewhere down the line, you don't want to get involved. You know what? Stand up for them. I called you three times in the last month and a half to get you to go out to see that family, and he knows that he was standing with me on one of those phone calls. You know what, Travis? You can shake your head all you want. Don't become a bigger embarrassment than me, okay? Talking to people out there in the public, you have no clue what we go through. Um, and when you tell stories like this behind the scenes, which I didn't want to come out in public and say it, people just come out and say, well, it's only Max. And he's right, he's been doing it for 30 years. But you know what? I'm sick of it. Uh, if it's only Max, it doesn't make it right. We have staff that has issues. I'm not gonna go into details or anything. But everybody knows at City Hall, and he's right. You back him in the corner and be watch out. And I'm tired of it. I think pretty much staff's and tired of it. I think our council's tired of it. And hopefully the citizens are tired of it as well. Thank you. My turn? Yeah. I'm really gonna be nice. I have just one little complaint. It's not any of you guys' fault. Millie Evans, 671 Third Place Southeast. I have a question. You have a new building here in Mason City, and I know I've seen it in the paper what it is, but Lord, I don't know, remember what it is. But anyhow, it's this new building that's built right next to the Frank Lloyd Wright home. You know what I'm talking about? Please have somebody mow that lawn. It's a nice sort of people are coming to look at that Frank Lloyd Wright, and you got A out there. So I don't know who's supposed to be taking care of that, but that's all I ask is just have somebody mow that grass down. Thank you. Thank you. See, I told you I'd be nice. All right, anybody else? All right, that concludes the listening, folks. Uh, we, had, we had a motion and a second on the table.